Okay, we're back. We're at the server space. We're supposed to go meet the elusive man. But before we do that, first off, change her casual appearance. I much prefer this outfit to anything else she's got available. Whereas Mass Effect 3, I have the hoodie. But I only wear that really on the Sunset Strip or the Silver Sun Strip. It doesn't seem appropriate running around the Presidium in the hoodie, at least most of the time. Now, what are we going to have her... I got several different armor types, but they don't do much. I mean, health and shields by 10%, yada yada, whatever. This one's pretty good, but not for my adept. I don't really need power damage. And... And this is also power damage. The storm speed's nice. But you can get that with just the regular. And I want... Her. You know, this would be interesting, except I don't like helmets that cover Shepard's face. I mean, you spend all this time in the face creator, and then the helmet covers their face, and you can't see it. And also makes cutscenes. A lot of cutscenes look stupid. You walk in, your face is totally covered, and people go, Shepard? How do you know it's Shepard under that thing? Or the worst is if you're romancing Liara and you want to kiss her during Lord of the uh, Lara the Shadow Broker, and, and she's kissing this helmet. You're like, that, that's stupid. So... I'm going to go with this one. 5%. Recharge time. Power damage, new. No. I take this, a little extra weapon damage, a little extra shields. Uh, what do we got here? Shields by eight versus weapon damage by three. Well, we'll go with that. And uh, what's this? What's this got? Weapon damage by another 3%. So that's 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 5. So it's, it's, it's about 11%. Big deal. Not much. Not about. And not much at all. And shield strength by 3 or shields by 8. Obviously we'll go with that. And I've never known what this material does. I'm going to deck her out in white for now. With, I think, a blue. No, no, no. We'll keep that white. And, uh, or we could go with a camo color camo color scheme. Mm, nah. Go with that. It looks alright. Maybe we could go with... Yeah, I don't know. Let's go with that. All right. <clears throat> That's good enough. The visors gives me a decent increase in recharge speed, 5%. Uh, which from a lot of my powers, there's six, well, six second on warp, 5% would be 0.3 seconds. Um, And just a little discussion of my main thing I want to do is get right to there at least the 1.75 meter radius on the singularity. And that way, when somebody's hiding behind cover and you toss a singularity at them, it can dig them out of the cover even though they're behind it. Um, this is another priority here, getting that recharge time down. 
So right now I have a 10% bonus with the visor. That's 0.6 seconds on warp. And 0.45 seconds, almost half a second on singularity. Singularity is going to be my main power. Because mainly I'm going to toss that at people to hold them in place. It's got a hold duration right now of 6 seconds. The bigger the object, the less it gets held. Or the more the objects, the less hold time it has. But nevertheless, this is my big hold them in place uh, while we shoot them. Hopefully shoot their shields off where they're being held or their armor off and that way they'll start to float. As an adept I'm going to use Shepard to do all the lifting and then Miranda can do warps on them for, for explosions. And I want to get this up to get my recharge time down because every step up we go another 5% on the recharge time. Uh, so that's, these are the two powers I'm going to be working on. Biotic Mastery and Singularity. Unfortunately, you can't get the Biotic Cooldown upgrade until after Horizon. Uh, oh well. It's just something we'll have to live with. I suppose we didn't have to have that visor on right now. Let's take that visor off before we go talk to the elusive man. Let's just not wear a visor for our talk with the elusive man. Commander Shepard. Elusive man. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. Unnecessary precaution. Not unusual for people who know what you and I know. What exactly is it that you and I know? That our place in the universe is more fragile than we'd like to think. That one woman, one very specific woman, might be all that stands between humanity and the greatest threat of our brief existence. The Reapers. Good to see your memory's still intact. How are you feeling? Cut to the chase. What are the Reapers doing that made you decide to bring me back? We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. While you've been sleeping, entire colonies have been disappearing. Human colonies. We believe it's someone working for the Reapers. Just as Saren and the Geth aided Sovereign. You've seen it yourself. You bested all of them. That's just one reason we chose you. I don't like it. You lose this if you go the investigate route. I don't know why. Sovereign was trying to harvest all life in the galaxy. Why would the Reapers target a few human colonies? Hundreds of thousands of colonists have vanished. I'd say that fits the definition of harvesting. Nobody's paying attention because it's random, and the attacks occur in remote locations. I don't know why they've suddenly targeted humanity. Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. And you also miss out on the... Uh, one of these has he says well they sudden the collectors oh and that's on the next dialogue after after freedom's progress but all right it's, uh, fighting a war doesn't seem like Cerberus oops should, why are you involved we're should committed I? to the advancement and preservation of humanity if the Reapers are targeting us trying to wipe us out Cerberus will stop them if we wait for politicians or the Alliance to act no more human colonies will be left I really shouldn't have asked that because she doesn't know about Cerberus. If this is a threat against humanity, you need to mobilize the Alliance. The Alliance is overwhelmed by the responsibility you gave them. They're too busy building relations to put resources into verifying the Reaper threat. Blaming the abductions on mercs and pirates is easier and more convenient. 
You could have trained an entire army for what you spent to bring me back. You're unique. Not just in ability or what you've experienced, but in what you represent. You stood for humanity at a key moment. You're more than a soldier. You're a symbol. And I don't know if the Reapers understand fear, but you killed one. They have to respect that. If you're after the Reapers, just point me in the right direction. Miranda was worried you'd be resistant. She's not usually wrong. I have a shuttle ready to take you to Freedom's Progress, the latest colony to be abducted. Miranda and Jacob will brief you. Miranda killed Wilson in cold blood. Jacob's just a gun for hire. You expect me to trust them? Wilson was one of my best agents, but he was a traitor. Miranda did exactly what I expected of her, and she saved your life in more ways than one. Jacob's a soldier, one of the best. He's never fully trusted me, but he's always been honest about it. You'll be just fine with them. For now. What do you think I'll find there? If I knew that, I wouldn't need to send you. Find any clues you can. Who's abducting the colonies? Do they have any connection to the Reapers? I brought you back. It's up to you to do the rest. I'm just looking at these tabs here. Plus four renegade. Just as a reminder here, she is a colonist and she's ruthless. She'll do whatever she needs to to get the job done. But she's very sympathetic to other colonists and stop that shepherd. I hate it when the NPCs do that. They they just got way into this. Oh, I'm standing here not doing anything. So I'm going to stretch and all of this crap. I, I hate that. Um, anyway, she... And she didn't do any of the Cerberus stuff. So she didn't know anything about Cerberus. Even though everybody wants to assume she does. Uh... And so, here's this organization that's brought her back to life, and they claim that they want to fight the Reapers, and that colonies are being abducted, and she's like, well, okay, if this is true, I want to do something, and if you are fighting Reapers, and the Alliance isn't, well, I'll work with you, that'd be fine, no problem. So... They make it really hard, though, to side with service. The, they make you join this evil organization, but then they constantly want to push you in the supposedly evil. I mean, it's just weird the way they've got this whole thing set up. But uh, then they constantly push you to want to say, Oh, well, I hate this organization. I hate this organization. What crap, man? I don't get it. It's just the storytelling is a little bit off here. I Also, I wish it wasn't an organization. I wish it was like a federation of independent colonies, human colonies off in the Terminus systems. And that's why the Alliance didn't want to do anything. Then it would make sense Shepard could say, oh, well, I'm ditching my Alliance ties because they're not doing anything to help these colonists out in the Terminus. So I think that would have worked better than this organization that by Mass Effect 3 has more resources than the rest of the galaxy put together apparently. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Even in this game, the amount of resources that Cerberus has is just absurd. Anyway, let's talk to Miranda. Actually, I came in here once. I was playing a game. Miranda just wasn't here. I was like, where the hell? What the hell? Just glitched out. She wasn't here. The elusive man is very impressed with you. I'm eager to see if you can live up to his expectations on this mission. I can't have anyone disobeying my commands when we get there. I know who I report to. As long as you don't do anything to betray Cerberus, I'll follow your orders.
What's the matter, Lawson? Worried you're not his favorite anymore? I've proven my value to the elusive man. Let's hope you're able to do the same. Are you naturally this bitchy, or is it just me? I have the utmost respect for your abilities, Shepard. It's your motivations that concern me. I believe in what Cerberus stands for. Only time will tell if you prove to be an asset or a liability to our cause. What can you tell me about this colony we're going to? Freedom's Progress? It's a typical human settlement in the Terminus systems. They had a small military force for protection supplemented by mechs and security drones. Average in almost every way, really. Completely unremarkable. Until the disappearance. Any thoughts on what we might run into there? A lot of empty buildings and one giant mystery. I'd like to know more about the Lazarus Project from the person in charge. I wasn't in charge. The elusive man was. If I was running the show, we'd have done a few things differently. This is really interesting. If you pick this, she'll talk about the control chip in Mass Effect 3. But if you don't, she'll skip the... Con or, no, Shepard's dialogue says, I think you mentioned this once before, but if you don't hit this di uh, investigate option, Shepard, that line doesn't appear. It's like, how interesting. Even this tiny little line of dialogue here uh, actually affects something that happens in Mass Effect 3. What would you have changed? To start, I would have implanted you with some type of control chip. But the elusive man wouldn't allow it. He was afraid it might affect your personality, alter your character somehow. He wouldn't let us do anything that might limit your potential in any way. Can't say I like the idea of being brought back to life with a control chip in my brain. The elusive man is taking an incredible risk with you. I just hope his gamble pays off. Tell me a little about yourself. Worried about my qualifications? I can crush a mech with my biotics or shoot its head off at a hundred yards. Take your pick. Did you and Jacob serve together in the Alliance? No. The elusive man recognized my potential and recruited me at a young age. How old were you? Old enough to know this is what I wanted. I was trying to get to know you as a human being. I'm not looking for a friend, Shepard. Stay focused on the mission. It's obvious you're not interested in talking. We've got an assignment. We can talk about it, or we can do it. I'm glad the elusive man convinced you to join us, Commander. Cerberus gave me my body back. That's worth giving them a chance. One chance. But you're still not convinced. Do you trust me, Commander? They assume you know something about this organization and... and are automatically suspicious of it. I mean, it's probably right to be suspicious. Who the hell are these people? I don't know who the hell these people are. Out of nowhere, they resurrect me. I mean, I don't know. And the first thing about them. So that might make sense, but... Oh, well. Do I trust Jacob? Well, the guy was up front with Shepard. So he seems like he might be... Okay, but we're not going to... She's not going to automatically cut. I mean, the, the way she treated Liara was like, pfft. She didn't trust Liara. So why should she trust this guy that she just met? I haven't made up my mind about you yet. At least you're giving me a chance. Most Alliance soldiers hate Cerberus on principle. Do you know anything about this colony we're going to? It's called Freedom's Progress. Don't know much else. I guess we'll find out when we get there. You said you served in the Alliance. Five years in total. Stationed all over the galaxy. Even spent a couple of years as a Corsair. I've never heard of the Corsairs. It was an Alliance initiative. They hired independent starship captains and used them for missions that fell outside official Alliance jurisdiction. Technically, we weren't part of the Alliance. If we ever got caught, they could disavow any knowledge of us. We were supposed to be free from restrictions and rules. But there was still enough red tape to sink a cruiser. I finally just gave up. What is it about red tape that these writers always are talking about? I swear, is it just another frickin' trope that they have to hit, or what? Why did you join Cerberus? I guess I just got tired of never making a difference. So much of what we did in the Alliance seemed pointless. I thought things would change after the attack on the Citadel. The old Council was dead, and humanity took control of the new one. Nothing changed. 
Politics, bureaucracy, same bullshit, different leaders. Cerberus is different. When colonies go missing, we don't commission a team to write a report to figure out what the hell to do about it. We just go and find out. That's all for now. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, our next stop is Freedom's Progress. I, I think we're going to level when we... Oh, we already leveled. Well, I think we want to go this way. Although a cooldown would be nice. 5% extra cooldown would be nice. Hmm. I don't know. I think we'll go this way. Uh. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll go for a little extra cooldown there. I think we'll go here next. Okay. And I think we will call it quits right now. Freedom's Progress can kick your butt when you first get there at this low level and a, and a, and a higher difficulty. Uh, so it may take a bit. Um, but we'll get to that in the next episode. Until then, take it easy.